recruited because I have been so desperate for work that I have had to start taking a job at my aunt's summer camp. And that's why I'm here today, because I need some advice from my friends here on YouTube and TikTok on what I should do. And I, I don't want to be using this account anymore. I don't want anything fucking degenerate, piece of shit, dope addict, fucking vampire. But I have my own account now, but when I post videos on it, I get two or maybe three views. Yeah. And this fuckface still gets a lot of views. So I'm going to use his account until mine gets larger as well. So if you don't like it, tough, tough titty said the kitty, but the milk's still good because I'm not going anywhere. I don't give a fuck about you. I hate you, just like you hate me. And you know what else I hate? I fucking hate kids and I fucking hate summer camp and I really hate that worthless ass lying piece of shit degenerate scumbag fucking bitch fucking aunt of mine. I really hate her fucking guts. She is a useless piece of shit. She's a deceptive lying fucking thief. Just, just, just like my mother. Just two complete useless pieces of shit. Two useless people that never should have existed, dude. Never should have existed. So, so she hires me to work at her summer camp and I am in a very bad situation and she knows it, dude. And I, I, I think that's why she did it, dude. She could smell the exploitation in the air, dude. Yeah. She knew that I was somebody who was in a bad situation and she could exploit me. She could rip me off and she could lie to me, deceive me. She could do all those things and get away with it because she's my family and she knows I'm desperate. And that is exactly what she did. I worked two fucking weeks for that fucking bitch. Do you know what I got for it, dude? I, I got about $26, dude. And, and that was in change. And, and not, not quarters either, dude. I'm talking pennies and fucking nickels. That is what that fucking bitch gave me. Two weeks, dude. Two fucking weeks. Two weeks of my fucking life at the worst fucking job I've ever had. It was two weeks of pure fucking humiliation. And I'm not even gonna get paid for it. But what I will get is revenge. And that is why I'm here today because I need to speak with my friends and get some helpful advice from you. Yeah. And it, it, it wasn't even that bad the first few days, dude because I was able to lay down the law. And I let these little fucking pricks know that I'm not like their other camp leaders, dude, and I'm not gonna take their shit. No. But then the cat lady showed up, dude. The cat lady, yeah. It's, it's some worthless, stupid, brain dead bitch, some school teacher that my aunt knows. It's, it's one of her, her neighbors or something. And of course, my stupid bitch aunt had to hire her. She's just completely, completely amazed by her. Just thinks she's the greatest fucking thing since sliced bread, dude. So she's gotta hire that stupid bitch too. And this stupid old bitch comes in there and she, she, she proceeds that she's going to teach us all how to deal with children because she's an elementary school teacher, dude. So she, she must know a lot about camps. Yeah, and that, of course, we are all subject to exactly what she wants us to do. Told that they can only be praised for all of the selfish, degenerate, dangerous, reckless, hateful things that they do. That's all they do, dude. They're Kids are not good people, dude. None of them are. So l let me give you another example, dude. Let let's say little Jimmy, he's maybe he's 12 or 13 and he sees a basketball in the middle of the gym. Now, the gym is where they're having the summer camp and it's full of kids all over the place. But this hateful little prick, he cannot can help himself and he has to kick that basketball as hard as he possibly can. Six feet away from him, Little Polly is playing Candyland with one of her campmates. And lo and behold, that 
basketball that he kicked full force because he's about the size of an adult male kicking a basketball as hard as he could. Well, it hits that little girl, Polly, little five-year-old Polly, right in her face as hard as possible. It hits her so hard, it could possibly cause her to be become retarded, dude. Yeah, that's how bad it is. And you can't say, hey, you little prick, you do that again, I'm gonna put you, you can't say anything to me. I can't go up to him and say, hey, you little bastard, look what you just did. See, in a normal situation, once he kicked that basketball in her face, I would get up right in that little prick's face and I'll fucking scream. I'd say, you little bastard, look what you just did to her. And I'd let him have it, dude. I would let him have it. And if need be, I'd let him experience it himself. So that way, he would know better. And he would never do it again, dude. But but no, the, the cat ladies, they know better, dude. They have a, a, a much better plan. Instead, we have to compliment him on how great of a kick he gave the girl. And politely ask him, maybe next time, to not kick the ball in her face. He will just ignore you and he'll do it again anyway, but you're, you're supposed to do that. And, and, and why wouldn't he, dude? Why, why wouldn't he kick her in the to get with the ball? There, there's no repercussions, dude. Nothing's going to happen to him. He could literally go around there causing everyone nothing but grief and misery all day. And all he's gonna get for it is praise. No one's ever gonna tell him it's wrong, it's bad, he shouldn't do it. Because a bunch of fucking deranged cat ladies have taken over our education system. And they have personally made my life a living fucking hell. Yeah, that, that is the type of shit they want you to spew out to these horrible, stupid, raised wrong fucking kids. Because these kids are raised wrong. Their parents are fucking failures and they have raised complete pieces of shit. And they're already sociopathic, narcissist little pricks. They're horrible. All they care about is themselves. They're nasty, vile, disease infested, infection infested creeps. And I don't like them at all. Although I was able to get a pack of cigarettes and some food, I, I wasn't really happy, dude. Not, not knowing that that fucking bitch isn't gonna pay me anything. All day, I'm not gonna get a fucking penny for where I work. And on top of that, I could tell I'm getting sick, and maybe you haven't noticed, but my, my voice is a little off because one of those nasty little infection infested, nasty little fucking creeps gave me whatever they have, which God knows what it is, pink eye or herpes, who fucking knows? They're just disgusting little creeps. Filthy, they're, they're fucking filthy. And they stink, dude. Yeah. But, but you know who else stinks, dude? My fucking aunt. She's disgusting. She is a disgusting, smelly bitch. She, she smells like old, dried up beef. Yeah, everywhere you go, she smells like beef. Like, even her office, dude. Like, I dread going to her office if the door is closed, especially now in the summer, because I know the smell of, like, old beef. Because she's a disgusting old beefy bitch. Old beefy bitch. Just like my mother. Two worthless pieces of shit who the world would be better off without. And I am completely destitute, completely fucking penniless. I couldn't even afford a snack to get any lunch or anything like that. I, I can't even get cigarettes, dude. And I am addicted to nicotine. And I need my cigarettes, dude. I, I was nicking, dude. I was nicking. I was nicking really bad. And 
these fucking little snot-nosed brats are making me look like a complete asshole, like a complete fool, just ignoring me in front of everyone there. And all those little pricks that work there, all those teenage little fuckers that work there, however old they're, maybe they're in their 20s. I, I don't know how old the people that work there. All, all I know is that I am the odd man out. No, nobody there likes me, dude. And I don't, I don't like them either. And I, I know that they all talk about me and I am the butt of their jokes. And I, I, I don't give a rat's ass, dude. I, I couldn't care less about any of them. I, I don't even know where to begin, dude. So, so I go to my aunt and I ask her. So at first, I just try to drop some hints so I don't have to ask her for the money that I've worked so hard for that I deserve. I just make some subtle hints about not having any money. And of course, that stupid bitch, she either is too stupid to realize it or she's just too fucking stingy. But she, she's not taking the bait, dude. So wait a little while later and I ask her once, hey, auntie, do you think I can get some money for all the work that I've done? And she ignores me. She pretends like she doesn't hear me, dude. So I wait a few minutes and I ask her again. And this time, I, I get a response, dude. Yeah. She, she starts to act like a complete fucking bitch. Starts saying, oh, why, that's all I care about is money and I'm just a burden on her and why did she hire me here anyway? And I'm not a team player and just, just all of this fucking nonsense. And I, I don't care, dude. I don't give a fuck. I just want my fucking cigarettes. I would, I would like to get some lunch too, maybe. I know that's a lot to ask. I'm working a full fucking day, dealing with these snotty little fucking pricks. But I, I, I don't think a lunch is t asking too much. But I guess with that cheap. So I, I, I don't know how much time later it was, but I was getting really, really hungry, and I really needed a fucking cigarette, and I had had enough. I've been working two fucking weeks. You're supposed to get paid after two weeks and I'm not getting anything. So I ask her again. And this time I get a more nasty response than the last one from her. And this time there's a bunch of those little stuck up bitches that work there. They're all in the office too. So they all get a seat as well. They all get to have a little laugh at my humiliation. And that, that fucking bitch aunt of mine, she, she, she fucking takes her nasty little hand and she fucking slams it down on the table. And then she starts screaming about me and saying I'm useless and I'm worthless and all I care about is money and blah, blah, blah. I don't give a fuck. And then she takes her disgusting old 1970s Kmart fucking purse out and she slams it down on the table and it's just full of fucking change. And it goes everywhere, dude. All of this change, big pile of change. It goes all over the place, dude. And she says, there you go, you mother effer. There's your effing money and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck she said. I don't care, dude. And I'm so hard up and desperate, I take the change. But it's not quarters, dude. No. There was maybe two quarters in that whole fucking pile. It's, it's, it's all pennies and nickels. Yeah. So I had to go into the store and pay for my cigarettes with pennies and nickels. And they were $12, dude. 12 fucking dollars. Kids are not good people, dude. None of them are. They're, they're horrible. All they care about is themselves. They're nasty, vile, disease-infested, infection-infested creeps. And I don't like them at all. You, you, you can't just go to these kids, dude, and, and tell them to stop doing something. They, they're going to say, why, why, why? That's what they say to you. Why, why, no, no, no. And I'm just so fucking sick of it. I fucking hate them. I fucking hate their parents, dude, for being such fucking lazy, pathetic, selfish pieces of shit. Raised fucking complete garbage, just like them. Just like them, dude. Just complete worthless dog shit. So, if my stingy ass, tight wide, cheapskate bitch aunt would have just been honest in the first place and gave me some fucking money for the last two weeks that I've worked, the, none of this would have probably happened, dude. But she couldn't do that, dude. And I am completely destitute, completely fucking penniless. I couldn't even afford a snack to get any lunch or anything like that. I, I can't even get cigarettes, dude. And I am addicted to nicotine. And I need my cigarettes, dude. 
and that little fucking prick, AJ, well, he's got a little sister. She's, she's, I, I don't know, five or maybe five, maybe, maybe, maybe six, dude. I, I don't know. I, I don't fucking care. I couldn't care less either. And she thinks it's real funny to just, just like her pussy ass brother to make up names for me. And she starts calling me Barkface. Like, like bark from a tree. Like, that, that's real fucking funny, dude. Real funny. Yeah, I have, I have bark face. My face is made of bark, dude. Ha, ha, ha. It's, that's hilarious, bro. It's, it's real fucking funny. It's really original. And I started to become very angry. I, I put up with it a couple days. But have you ever seen a lion in a cage? And people poking that lion, prodding it, and mocking it, and teasing it, and tormenting that lion. Sooner or later, that lion's gonna start getting really angry. And you better hope, and you better pray, that lion never gets out of that cage. Because if that lion gets out of that cage, there's gonna be a lot of trouble. And there, there's gonna be a lot of carnage, dude. And today, well, the lion got out of the cage, dude. I had enough of the abuse, and the torment, and the exploitation, and the fact that I'm not getting paid any fucking money for the work that I did, and I let him have it. Yeah. So, so I came back from my lunch break and she starts giving me more guff. Starts saying how if I want all this money for working there, I could at least show up on time. And I, I don't understand what this is about. And she says, I'm three minutes late for lunch. I was supposed to be gone for 30 minutes, but I was gone for 33. whoop de fucking do dude. whoop de fucking do And her little comments really started to make it where I was reaching the point of no return. The lion was about to come loose, dude. And he had been prodded one time too many. And that's pretty much what happened, dude. When, when I went back into the gym, I saw that stupid little bitch, uh, AJ's sister, the little five or six year old little prick that calls me Burkface, and I let her have it, dude. Yeah. I noticed that there were no other adults around. So, well, I had that moment by myself with her. I told her just what I think of her. Just what I, just, just, just what I thought of her, dude. Just, just what I thought of her, dude. Just what I thought of her. Yeah. I got right into her stupid little ugly face. And I think her name is Ashley. I, I don't know. I don't care. I said, Ashley, you are ugly and you are stupid. And I said it really loud to her. And I could tell by the look on her face that she was very, very hurt by my comments, dude. Very hurt. But I didn't give her much time to react to that either. Because after I said that, then I screamed in her face, I hate your guts. And I said it pretty loud, dude, because other people heard me as well. But as she ran off, she, she, she runs off to the bathroom to go cry like a little baby because she, she can dish it out, but, but, but she sure can't take it, dude. She can't take it, no. Then I marched down to the field outside because I know that little prick's gonna be out there with that other stupid bitch and I let him have it too, yeah. Because little AJ, he thinks he's Mr. Cool, and there's another girl about his age there also, who they, they, they walk around all day, just walking around the field, talking about how cool they are, making fun of other people, and I let him have it, dude. So I, I saw that there was no one else around. There were no other adults that were going to see what was going to transpire. So I, I gave the scare of his life, dude. I let him know that there are boundaries that with adults that you shouldn't cross. Because that is the big problem with kids these days. They don't know that it, there are boundaries with adults. And if there are certain things that are said or done to an adult, an adult can clobber you. An adult could do many things to you that you won't like. And today he discovered that. Because I did a quick look over my shoulder to make sure there was no one else out there with an earshot or eye, eyesight. And then I called him out, dude. Right in front of his little girlfriend, dude. I got right in his little face. I said, you wanna go, punk? You wanna go, punk? And I started screaming, but I grabbed him by his collar of his shirt and I pulled him in close and I said, let's go. And I put him face to face with me and I said, let's fucking go, dude. Let's fucking go. And I could tell he's a pussy. He was already quivering and scared. I could see it right in his face that he was scared. And to me, that is like a shark tasting blood in the water. And then I really pounced on him, dude. I, I, I did the old, Angry principal at, at my old school, my, when my principal would give me shit, he would start poking me in the chest, and he would get real nasty with me. And that's just what I did to him. And then I made him apologize. More than once, too. I made him say he was sorry. 
I, I don't know many times. I made him say he was sorry, that he would never do it again. He apologized for his sister. He, I made him apologize to the girl. <laughs> I, I made him apologize to that girl, dude. I, I don't even know what he's supposed to apologize to her for, but, but I made him do it in. Just, just to make him look like more of a pussy, which is what he is. And I, I, I felt pretty good about the situation, but I, I didn't realize that that little pussy is also a talent. And I should have known this dude because when he went back to camp, he just covered his face for the rest of the day until his poor mother picked him up. So I turned those two into a brother and sister crying team, which I felt pretty good about, dude. And from, from there on, dude, I just made things a little bit uncomfortable for a lot of these other campers too, dude. Because a lot of them, a lot of these other ones, they all had things to say about me as well. Or they would definitely join in on the laughter. Definitely like to have a good laugh at my expense. I made things difficult for them. Because a few hours later, it's night time. When I would look around, I'd see there were no other camp leaders out there. I would just take things out of the train, directly right in front of them, dude. This one look always thinks it's real funny when they call me Burkface or Klingon. He thinks, thinks it's real funny. But he didn't think me taking all his Cheetos away from him was very funny, dude. Because those little packs, those little pricks he did, I just reached my hand and I grabbed every single Cheeto in that bag, dude. And I stuffed them all down my mouth, all at once, dude. And I don't even like Cheetos, but, but the satisfaction of eating those and the look on his face, well, you, you can't put a price tag on that, dude. I, I, I realized that I'm making a lot of campers here pretty upset. The, the day was coming to an end anyway, so I decided to just, just play cool, dude. But I, I didn't say anything mean to anyone else. I, I got some board games for the kids to play with, and they were, they were all very quiet the rest of the day. No, nobody said much of anything. But maybe an hour or two ago, my bitch aunt calls. That, that, that worthless bitch aunt of mine, she, she calls up to let me know that she's had four parents call up and complain and say that they are no longer going to go to the camp. They are all canceling their contracts with her scam. And I, I, I couldn't give a rat's ass, dude. At this point, I could care less. I'm glad. I hope that bitch loses her fucking company, dude. She's gonna make, exploit me, make me work for her for two weeks and not pay me. That's what you get, dude. You get a disgruntled employee. And there, there, there's nothing more dangerous and more destructive to a company or a corporation than a disgruntled employee. And that's that's what I was, dude. That, that, that's what I am. Now she's saying she's not going to pay me anything for those two weeks. Well, I, I'm gonna sue her, dude. And she should fucking know better. Not, not only that, I, I've not been legally hired. I've been working under the table because I am a felon and I am not supposed to be in the company of children. I am not supposed to work around children or with them. And that is directly what I've been doing. So I'm, I'm gonna put all the beans, I'm gonna spill all the beans. I'm gonna put it all on the table. I'm gonna give her an option. She needs to give me all the money she owes me plus an additional $2,000 compensation. And if she doesn't do that, well, she can kiss her camp goodbye. And then that worthless bitch will have nothing. Yeah. If, if you were one of my friends, I would really appreciate some helpful advice on my situation and other things I can do to get even with her and perhaps my mother and father as well.